Good morning. It is Thursday, June the 11th, and we've got a few shout outs. Now, um, a couple of these are knitting channels, and then there's a uh, mostly crochet for the rest of them. Now, you know that I love finding new channels, and um, you know the, the hashtag Christmas in July fairies has brought a whole lot of new channels to me and I'm enjoying it so if you have not um, gone to look at these videos and left comments on all those videos and you really need to watch them all the way through some of them have certain specific words they want you to use or something in the comment they want you to use so you need to watch it all the way through and I'll leave a link to the playlist down below um, as well as the links to the rest of these channels. <sighs> I'm going to start with a knit one first. And it is Cheryl Beckerich Knits. And her channel is mostly about knitting tutorials to help you build your knitting skills. I really, I get Cheryl's newsletter and I really enjoy it and I love looking and going to see the videos she has because there are sometimes I'll see a stitch and I just don't understand exactly what the person who wrote the pattern is trying to convey. And many times I can go to her channel and figure that out completely because she has a clear cut as well as showing you while she's doing it. The next channel is Hey Carrie. Now this is a large channel. And um, you know the channels that do a lot of just crochet tutorials always have large numbers of subscribers. But she has some great garment tutorials. I don't think I've seen anything else on her channel but garments. Um, beautiful. And she talks you through them. Um, for most of the way, um, you can pretty easily, if you're a fluffy girl like me, you can figure out how to adjust that number to make it larger. And, um, yeah, check her out. The next one is Mel, and she comes from Colors of the Outback. This is another Aussie girl. And she has some beautiful yarns that she's showing you as well as cross-stitch items. Um, so, I'm enjoying seeing that. I have not done cross-stitch in many years because, you know, as you get older, you need bifocals. Bifocals, I found, um, drove me nuts because... You know, when they put them on your face, they adjust that to a certain point to where you are looking down. However, I could not get the optometrist to understand that I needed that to go a little higher because of where the glasses sit on my nose. And they, you know, it was just a constant battle. So I did not do well with bifocals at all and I finally asked my um, eye doctor if we could just not do the bifocals and that um, he could just do some reading glasses for me and do the other glasses when I was wearing them the regular way without the bifocals and he did do that for me so um, if you're having issues with bifocals cannot adjust well to them they didn't help me much um, do ask your eye doctor to do the opposite. Yeah, it costs a little more, but it, to me it was worth it. But of course, then I had cataract surgery, corrected my vision, so, you know, I, I need reading glasses when there's low light and um, when my eyes are tired now. So, um, The next one is, and I am going to butcher the name of this channel, 
and she is a lovely tiny woman. Mimosa Kagiyami Crochet. She is also one of the fairies. However, most of her channel is in Japanese. And she makes some wonderful items. I wish that she would do some um, closed captioning in English so that we could see what she's doing. But then again, it's just beautiful to sit and watch and listen to her as she talks. You know, and if Billy is correct, if I watch enough of them, I'll be able to speak Japanese soon. Understand completely. If you've not seen vi Billy's video where she talks about uh, watching so many films in different languages, she thinks she can now speak them. Or at least she understands what they're saying. And that is true. Um, you know, small children, when parents uh, move to different countries, like I'll give you an example. My sister, her husband was in the military. When they moved to the Czechoslovakian area, and uh, they were in Germany, but um, her husband worked just across the border. But um, the kids learned German. They picked it up quickly. You know, just playing with kids that were speaking German. So, it is absolutely true. You can pick up the language as you are immersed in it. The next one is Valerie's Cuddly Cat Crochet, and she is back. I believe she has two videos. She was here before, and then when YouTube started doing their little thing with the adult content and things, she she just um, deleted her channel instead of waiting it out. But that's okay, because she's back now. So, um, yeah, really enjoy her. Then there's Gypsy's Yarn Yak, and this is Megan. And there are times that Megan talks really fast. I'm not sure if she's had a whole pot of coffee and a Red Bull and <laughs> whatever, but sometimes she gets talking so fast I have to slow it down. And yeah, you can do that in your settings. There's that little gear that's on the videos. You can speed them up or you can slow them down. <laughs> Didn't know that? Yeah, it's great fun. I do that lots of times when I am going off to a channel that is, you know, I love the Sasquatch videos where they're looking for Bigfoot. And there are a couple of videos, and one of my favorite guys is Timber Giant Bigfoot, and that is Jim. He just put a video out yesterday where he talks about um, an area where him and another guy were talking and they both saw something and that kind of thing. And then he kind of pauses off to the side and he says, I thought I saw movement over there. You can see the branch is still jumping up and down. And if you go back just a few frames from that and turn it to the slowest of slow videos, which is like 0.25, you can actually see a dark figure in the back go to the right and then come back to the left. And um, he said he just saw a flash. But when you slow it down, you can clearly see there is something back there. And it's big. And it's very dark. Um, Might have been a bear. I don't know. He's in Canada. So, who knows what it was. But you can clearly see something move from one side of the screen to the next side. And that's one of the things I like about this feature. You can slow it down. When I am looking at some of the ukulele tutorials, I slow them down many times in order to get the correct um, strum beat for like the island strum or chucking or those kind of things with the ukulele. So, there's a lot of things you can do with those videos. 
But anyway, Megan has been, I think she's got six or seven videos out. She shows a lot of her makes, and of course they're gorgeous. So give Megan a check and look-see. Then there is Affordable Crafty, and that is Kim. Now Kim, if I remember correctly, she does some spinning, but she does a lot of yarn dyeing. And she also shows you how going to the dollar store or Dollarama or whatever it is where she's at, you can use some of those items to turn them into tools to use for your crafting. And um, I'm really enjoying that channel and seeing those kind of things. So The next one is River Falls Plantation. This is a knitting channel. It's a typical podcast. And she talks a lot about the different knitting items that she's doing and what she's, what they're doing in their life. Um, so it's very interesting to see that. Then there is Nadine, the old crow. Now Nadine is a massage therapist who is currently out of work due to the virus, like most of us. Um, but she does knitting and crochet and... She has, I believe, three or four videos, and she just talks a little bit about what's going on in her life and things. And, of course, the first couple are a little dark because she didn't invest in, you know, lights and things like that. And because she just didn't know if she wanted to continue with this, you know, video, those kind of things. And I don't blame her because it does get costly to add in all those other bells, whistles, the lights, those kind of things. And of course, then to find a place to sit and film. You know, I choose to film right here. And that's because I am working on the upstairs to get it um, cleaned out enough. Because I have a lot of stuff that I need to go through and get rid of. And uh, in order to film in front of the yarn that I have. So... There you go. Gotta find a place to film, right? A lot of fun. Now this next one, this gal, she is so cute. She is the crocheting librarian and her name is Lily. She has a special place in my heart because my grandmother's name was Lily Bell. So, um, just because of the name. Lily is a young girl. I don't remember if she, I think she's 25, 23 or 25, somewhere around in there. She's currently going to school to become a librarian. She has a lot of beautiful makes. She has two videos and uh, she's also one of the fairies. Go check her out. Um, the next one is Naughty Yarnies. And this is Barb, and she is from Canada. She has two videos out. First one was introducing herself, and actually, I think she has more than two. Maybe not. But she introduces herself, the channel, that kind of information. And then her second video that I know of is as a Christmas fairy. So you're getting a twofer. You're getting a chance to win some great prizes, as well as finding new channels. Now, this last one may not be for everybody. Um, those of you that lean extremely left, this will not be correct for you. You will not enjoy this channel unless you want to hear the other side of the story about Ravelry and what happened and how the deplorable knitter, a couple of people, got booted out of rivalry, those kind of things. And this is the Politically Incorrect Knitters. It is Deplorable Knitter and Anna, and they discuss their very first video, what went on in rivalry with the issues of the first group that Casey did ban, and that was the McCain Palin group, and then they, you know, when they didn't win, they accepted it, but 
This was their safe haven in Ravelry where they could talk about politics if they wanted to, knit and crochet, those kind of things. Now, there were a lot of people that came in to start problems, and you know this is true. Even if you're on the left or the right, you know there are people that come in to stir trouble just because they're asshats. And um, they did that quite a while with this group. They tried to figure out a way to stop it. They were, you know, banning, blocking people from their groups and those kind of things. Eventually, they got sick of it. And they went and left and went to a new channel. They created their own safe, play, safe space to do this kind of things totally off-site, away from Ravelry. And yet, Casey still bothered them, doxed them, those kind of things. Now, Deplorable Knitter is a Christian, and she was a Trump supporter, and she saw all the um, different patterns Ravelry had, like if Trump, um, among some other rather nasty things, and um, she figured, well, I'm a designer, did some color work, so she created a hat. Um, for Trump positive hat red white and blue with the words Trump she got a lot of grief from a lot of those that were on Ravelry from the left who constantly contacted her gave her a lot of trouble um, she spoke with Casey more than once about the troublemakers those kind of things Casey was talking with her all along practic essentially blowing smoke up her butt so, um, you get to hear that side of the story, what happened. And my favorite part was when she talked about her God is Love hat, which is basically a gray hat with hearts on it. Done, And the hearts are done in rainbow. Now, of course, the LGBT community took great offense to that. You know, they were calling it a dog whistle with this hat, and she was like, LGBT doesn't own the rainbow. That was a promise that God gave us. A sign. And that is all that hat meant. <laughs> Apparently it was a dog whistle that only the left can hear. So, um, yeah. This virtual signaling is getting old. Um, if you follow Instagram, there's an issue with green socks. And a lot of other stupid stuff. So, um, it can get rather annoying when you listen to that kind of thing. And when you have to put up with it because you don't know what's correct, what's not correct. Um, everything you do can be considered racist. Everything you don't do can be considered great racist. <sighs> Gets old people gets old. That's all I'm saying on that. But you get to see their side of the story, what happened, and um, some of the other workings of what was done. So, and they do plan on doing some other videos that have nothing to do with Ravelry, but they thought they needed to start out with a discussion of what actually happened. So if you're extreme left, or left, and you're you don't want to hear what in they have to say, then stay away. Be kind and just stay away. Um, like I said, this probably won't fit everyone's bill. Some of you won't enjoy it. Some of you may be interested to find out the other side of the story. Like I said, there's two sides to a pancake. There always are. So, and actually there's three sides. If you want to do the side that puffs up. <laughs> Alright, that's it. Everybody, go check out these channels. Um, I will leave a card, information card at the end for the playlist for the um, fairies. The hashtag Christmas in July fairies. 
And if you're a podcaster and you haven't joined in on this and you would like to be a part of it, by all means, go sign up. It's going to be great. Um, A lot of the podcasters have signed up are going to be giving a prize to their person that they choose on the 15th, as well as sending a prize to the grand prize winner uh, that Dana will be picking July the 25th. So by all means, go sign up, find some new channels, leave comments, follow the directions they have in their videos. Most of the videos are under five minutes. Surely you can spare five minutes to follow the directions that each person has. Um, And enjoy the new channels. Go give them a look-see. Say hi. How you doing? And always, let's remember, be well, be safe, and be kind.